is that a lot of people are starting to foster pets right here in Southern Arizona. He has the story. Both the Humane Society and the Pima Animal Care Center tell me that the overall number of animals at their facilities right now is down. And the Humane Society indicates that their adoption numbers are way up from this time a year ago. <laughs> Nikki Reck over at PAC says they have over 800 animals in foster care right now. So many people in our community right now are first time fosters and we're loving this because they're learning that the best place for a pet is not in the shelter. It's it's in a home where someone loves it. Rex says about half of the animals currently being fostered will be adopted by the people currently caring for them. Pat continues to take in about 30 to 40 of what they call endangered strays per day and is asking for your help with any stray pets you may encounter. Friendly, healthy strays, we're asking folks to help us um, find their owners because when pets run away, they're typically very close to home. You may have heard this week that two cats in New York came down with coronavirus. If you are sick, the recommendation is to avoid other people and other pets. Right now, the Center for Disease and Control says it has no evidence suggesting the virus can be passed from pets to people, but you should have a plan ready for care of your pets if you do become ill with COVID-19. The ultimate goal for PAC and the Humane Society remains, as always, to find what they like to call forever homes for all of the animals in their care. Golf's Emily Reppert has more from Elmsford. Well, as the effects of COVID-19 continue to be felt throughout the community, a concern for pet owners may be making sure their furry companions have the necessary supplies. And here at Paws Cross Animal Rescue, they have you covered with their Community Kibbles program. The program provides food, litter, and other pet supplies to families in need in Westchester County. There's no approval process or regulated amount that may be taken. The program works strictly on the honor system. Paws Cross only asks that each person takes only what they need so they can serve as many pets and people as possible. Well, with everybody losing their jobs and, you know, a lot of uncertainty right now, one thing we can at least help with is making sure that their pets are fed. A great option for them to still keep their pets in their home instead of having to relinquish them to a shelter. Community Kibble is located just in the parking lot here at Paws Cross Animal Rescue. In March, we have our anniversary party and uh, we raise $150,000 to $200,000. Um, we had to cancel that event. It was scheduled for March 21st. Samantha Shelton from Fur Kids says they also had to close their thrift stores, which bring in 35% of their annual budget. So to lose all of that um, during this pandemic, it's scary. And we don't know what the future holds. So trying to manage this unknown has been a, a great uh, challenge. Shelton says the silver lining in all of this Adoptions and foster care of animals is at an all-time high. These 65 kennels are usually full. Now they house only five dogs. It's been wonderful to see some of our long-timers get a chance at adoption. Um, one of the challenges, it's very interesting, and I don't know how this is going to turn out, but one of the challenges we're facing right now is a lack of dogs uh, for our adoption program. And I never thought I'd say that. In fact, the Humane Society of the United States reports a nearly 800% increase in foster care for animals compared to this time last year. Foster numbers are insane and the adoption numbers are now starting to flatten, but that's because the shelters aren't taking in as many animals. Lindsay Hamrick is the director of policy companion animals for the Humane Society of the United States. She says there's been a goal nationally to limit the intake of animals at shelters and animal control facilities, which is why many are operating on an appointment only basis. This is really in terms of the equipment that they need to use. So they are still using PPE when they're handling animals. And so we want to make sure that as much of that is preserved for the human medical field as possible. They also want to make sure there is space in the shelters for animals animals who are in an urgent or emergency situation. I think that in the long run, the animal sheltering community is going to change for the better. And um, this is a really challenging time and there's a lot of stress in this field. But in the future, what this has really shown is that the community will step up and offer support and care for animals in their own communities. Once the COVID-19 pandemic subsides, Fur Kids hopes they'll be able to bring back some of the fundraisers they've had to cancel so they can rehire employees and prepare for any influx of kittens and puppies they usually see in the spring.
Don't be chicken, just grab it. Big baby. You've seen the talents on this? <laughs> <laughs>